Thank you, Mr. Obernolte. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to my fellow colleagues on the Budget Committee. I'd like to ask that uh, we be introspective for a moment here and try and look at the big picture, because uh, here's the situation we find ourselves in as Americans. Uh, the current debt ceiling was reached at the end of July. The current appropriations authorizations expire at the end of this month in just a few short days. And Secretary Yellen sent this committee and all of its members a letter last week warning that the extraordinary measures that the Department of Treasury are relying on to pay the country's bills will expire sometime in the month of October, certainly by the end of the month, absent action by the House of Representatives to extend uh, some more uh, borrowing limit to them. So uh, this it's not unrelated to the bill that we're considering today, but uh, I regret that we're not having a discussion in this larger context. Uh, the bill that we're considering today will have an impact uh, on both of those issues because although, as has been pointed out, the CBO is still scoring this bill, it's very clear that this bill will not be paid for. Uh, the committees that have reported out to us uh, have spent more than, than they were instructed to spend, and some of the pay-fors have not been approved. So uh, this bill will represent one of the largest expansions of government spending in history, uh, also by most measures, the largest tax increase in the history of the United States, and yet will still add substantially to the deficit uh, and uh, by extension, the national debt in years to come. Uh, and the, the, this, the reason why this matters is, uh, is this, and these are not uh, partisan figures. These are undisputed. Everyone agrees uh, with, with what I'm about to say. Our national debt is about $28.5 trillion right now. Last year, it passed the entire size of our economy for the first time since World War II. So we are getting into what most economists label as very dangerous territory. And I know there's been some disagreement and a lot of it's partisan on what that danger level is. Some people believe in modern monetary theory, but modern monetary theory does not teach that we can continue borrowing forever. What it teaches is that the danger level, instead of being maybe at 150% of GDP, maybe it's 250% of GDP. But unfortunately, the, the CBO says in just a few short years at the pace we're going, that we will pass 200% of GDP in debt, and that at that time, just paying interest on that debt is gonna consume over 10% of our total economy, just, just, inter, uh, just debt service. So my question to you is this, uh, we are the budget committee, right? It's kind of an interesting structure in the house. We've got ways and means uh, re responsible for revenue. We've got appropriations responsible for expenditures. We in the budget committee are supposed to be responsible for planning. So my question to everybody is, what is the plan? And I regret that so often this devolves into finger pointing and name calling. You know, who's, whose fault was this? Uh, which presidential administration spent this money? How did this debt arise? You know, uh, we can have that discussion some other time. What we need to all coalesce around is what are we going to do about it? And unfortunately, the bill we're marking up today takes us in the wrong direction. Uh, we could have a discussion about some of the tax increases in here, and I'm sure we'd have a variety of opinions on it, but instead of spending that money, we could be using it to close the deficit if you wanted to increase taxes on wealthy Americans. So uh, I, I, regardless of what is decided today and regardless of what happens with the reconciliation bill, we need to have a discussion as a budget committee, as a house and as a nation very soon on how to deal with this growing burden, because I think we can all agree that leaving this legacy of debt to our children is the wrong thing to do. I think we all agree that we are obligated to leave the world a better place for our children than the one we inherited from our parents. And a legacy of debt that's going to pass 200% of GDP in a few short years is not the way to do that. I yield back. I'll recognize Mr. Obernolte for the purpose of a motion. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion at the desk. Staff has distributed copies of the motion. The clerk will report the motion. Mr. Chairman, we have at the desk a motion offered by Mr. Obernolte. Clerk may dispense with the reading. The member from California is recognized for four minutes. He will also have one minute to close. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our federal budget deficit this year is estimated to be about $2.3 trillion. And I don't think anyone on this committee would argue that the bill that we're marking up today will not make that worse. It will be certainly worse in the short term, 
but even more so in the long term, because many of the programs that are anticipated under the legislation that we're considering don't phase in until later years. And the reason that that matters is that our federal debt for the first time last year exceeded the entire size of our national economy. We're approaching territory that almost every economist would agree is truly alarming and is gonna have long-term implications for the economic health of our country. The last time this occurred was at the end of World War II. And Congress at that time came up with a really innovative solution. They appointed a select committee to identify federal programs that were underperforming or were not meeting their goals and to make recommendations to Congress on how those programs could be made more efficient. This motion to instruct would accomplish something very similar. It would create a select committee called the Committee to Find Federal Savings. And we tried to craft it in a very thoughtful way. This committee would be broadly bipartisan. It would be consisted of uh, four members from this committee, the Committee on the Budget, two from each party, four members of the Committee on Appropriations, two from each party, four members on the Committee of Ways and Means, two from each party, and four from the Committee on Oversight, two from each party. The speaker would appoint the chair and the vice chair with the understanding that they would have to be from opposite political parties. So this committee would meet to identify underperforming federal programs and to make recommendations on how to make those programs more efficient, how to make them more effective, or as a last resort, uh, how to spin them down so that they were not wasting federal money anymore. Uh, once a year at a minimum, they'd be required to report to Congress and they would also be empowered to introduce legislation into Congress that is highly privileged. In other words, uh, it would be expedited uh, in its passage and would also uh, minimize the opportunity for outside forces and special interests to interfere with that process. So I would uh, hope that everyone on this committee, regardless of how you feel about the bill that we're marking up, could be able to agree that a committee like this to, to make federal programs more efficient uh, is a good thing. It certainly would be a bipartisan attempt to address the budget deficit and by extension, the national debt. And I would urge support for uh, the motion. I yield back. Gentlemen from California, we'll have one minute to close. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank my colleague for uh, her comments. Uh, I hope I didn't express any self-righteous indignation. I certainly won't uh, try to in my close here. To be clear, we're not debating the Build Back Better plan with this motion to instruct. What we're talking about is whether or not we should establish a commission to make government programs and government spending more efficient. And if the budget committee is not willing to take that uh, step, then my question is, what is our plan? Our job is to make a plan that has to include dealing with the deficit and by extension, the federal debt so in, because in the long term, I think everyone would agree it's going to be disastrous for our country and for uh, our economic climate and for the well-being of our children. So if not this, then what? And I'd also like to remind everyone that the last time our federal budget was balanced was in a divided government. It was a Democratic president, a Republican Congress. And I would hope that we would be able to, to come together uh, as a body, as a nonpartisan body, and put our differences aside and get the problem fixed. Uh, I urge adoption of the amendment.